My previous videos in this series took a deep dive with numerical examples of the three most common approaches to estimating current variance, or we could say volatility, that is moving average, exponentially weighted moving average, and the very popular GARCH 1-1 model. Now I'd just like to take a step back, highlight them conceptually what they're doing, show what the features that they have in common, and then what their key differences are. All three approaches to an estimate of today's variance have in common the U squared, where U is the return, probably a daily return, and so U squared is a squared daily return going back over some historical window. Maybe 20 trading days for a month, maybe 250 trading days for a year or longer. And then in this first approach to an estimate of variance, this is the most common and simplest approach, which we also call the moving average. You can see we said that this can be stated very simply, that our estimate for a variance today is simply the average squared return over the window. Right here is a summation of squared returns over M days and that summation is divided by m, so it's an average squared return. Very straightforward. It's okay also, we said, to use in the denominator here m minus 1 instead of m, because that's technically correct for a sample, which we're almost always taking a sample. So the m minus 1 is going to be slightly more conservative, but in general, close enough that we can replace the m minus 1 with m and use an average squared return for the estimate of variance under the moving average approach. But we saw there's a glaring weakness with this approach, the moving average, and that is imagine that our price series was relatively calm for a while in the distant past of the window and then became more volatile recently. The moving average, the average squared return, is, is indifferent to the sequence here. So it credits all of these daily returns equally, and it might get the same result as if this price series were volatile in the distant past, but more recently became benign. Whereas in practice, we'd prefer to assign more weight to the more recent returns. And so, this moving average generalizes to this formula here, where you can see weights are included explicitly. And we'll note that this expression here has a specific instance in the moving average where the weights here denoted by alpha sub i are equal. So if each alpha sub i has an equal weight, or is equal to 1 divided by m, then we have a special case here of the moving average where all the squared returns get equal weight. But now we've generalized and we've made the weights explicit. And we can take another step to the arch m model or arch 1 model where the variance then is the same here general expression for squared returns that are weighted however we want to weight them, but we add a term that gives some weight denoted by gamma to a long-run variance or unconditional variance. And so, as I like to say, this is the long-run variance to which this series is experiencing in a gravitational pull which is to say we could be right here in volatility, but there may be a long run or unconditional variance, and our volatility is going to get, or our variance, I should say, is going to get pulled toward, the, toward this long run value, depending on some weight gamma. And so at the moving average, starting at the moving average, we are generalizing and then generalizing again, such that this general, arch expression here has, if we insert a zero weight in gamma, just imagine, let's be specific about it, put a zero weight here, and then we also say the weight of each return is going to be, they're all going to be the same, 
1 divided by m, the number of days, well then we have a specific case here of the arch, which is the moving average. And also, if we just make this gamma weight 0, we have a specific case here for this expression. And so, just wanted to make the point that we really have one general form here that becomes more specific with the very common simple moving average. Now the this expression here with the weights that are really can be customized alpha sub i, alpha sub i sub 1, if the weights decline exponentially or in constant proportion then we have the exponentially weighted moving average version of this formula. After all, there's an infinite combination of different weights, but if we're very specific about the exponential decline in weights, then the recursive version of this is the exponentially weighted moving average, which is elegant because we don't have to go specifically back into the window. And so under the exponentially weighted moving average, we said that the estimate of today's variance is recursive. It's a function of the previous day, yesterday's variance estimate, weighted by lambda, which is a smoothing parameter or could be called a persistence parameter. So the greater this lambda, lambda, the more persistent this series is. And there are only two weights here, so the other weight is 1 minus lambda. So there's an infinite variety of these versions of the variance estimate where each of the weights are different. But if we decide to use the special case where the weights decline exponentially at a ratio of lambda, then we have the exponentially weighted moving average. And what I mean by decline exponentially or in constant proportion is that if our lambda is, let's say, 0.9, then our most recent return, you can see here, gets a 10% weight. Then the weight on the day before that which is not explicitly in this formula, but is embedded in it, is 0.9 or 90% of the 10%. So we go back to day n minus 2, and really implicitly in this recursive formula, that day, that day squared return is getting a 9% weight. And then we go back to day n minus 3, and its weight is 0.9 of 9, or 8.1%. And so this is a specific version here, but where the weights are declining exponentially, and each weight as a ratio of its neighbor is exactly lambda under this version. But we've overcome the main weakness in giving greater weight to more recent returns. And then generalizing as we said, we generalize by inserting back this term for the long-term variance. We end up with the Garch 1-1 is right here. And the Garch 1-1 generalizes the exponentially weighted moving average and therefore has similarities. The lambda that's in the exponentially weighted moving average, exponentially weighted moving average, the lambda is analogous to the beta in the Garch 1-1. This Garch 1-1, this is the recursive version here. And so just as with the exponentially weighted moving average, the ratio of consecutive weights on daily returns is beta. The higher the beta, the more persistent this series. Lambda is analogous to beta. 1 minus lambda is analogous to alpha. But with the Garch 1-1, the difference is we have a third term here. So instead of the two weights, which are really captured in only one parameter that we find in the exponentially weighted moving average, in the Garch 1-1, we have the three weights, alpha, beta, and the gamma that is embedded in the omega. I talked about, the, I talked about this on a previous video, right? We can see 
the omega is equal to the product of gamma and the long run variance. So our weights here really are alpha plus beta plus gamma together equal 1.0 or 100%. So we said alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 100% or 1.0. And so because of that necessary equality or constraint, if we take the fact that omega equals the product of gamma and the long run variance, then a common thing we can do is solve for the long run variance. So obviously you can see here is omega divided by gamma, but we just said that the weights need to sum to one. So that means the long run or unconditional variance embedded in this GARCH is the omega term divided by one minus alpha minus beta. A common exam question on the FRM, by the way. Okay, so that's the GARCH 1-1. And then these, this is the recursive GARCH 1-1 analogous to the recursive version of the exponentially weighted moving average. If I just scoot those recursive versions over to the left a bit, then we just recap with just key features. We said for the exponentially weighted moving average that it has one parameter, lambda. The weights decline in constant proportion. So the ratio of consecutive weights is lambda. That's the meaning of the parameter. A disadvantage or two disadvantages of this exponentially weighted moving average Recall, remember, it overcomes the big weakness in the simple moving average by assigning greater weights to more recent returns. However, it's somewhat subjective in terms of how we calibrate the lambda. There aren't really any good objective methods to fit or parameterize this lambda. And also, it does not really do a forecast. That is to say, whatever is today's estimate for variance, it's really a flat line going forward for future forecasts. So you could either say it does not forecast or it only forecasts a flat line for variance, which is not very helpful. And then the exponentially weighted moving average generalizes to the GARCH 1-1, which has three parameters that are really weights, alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 100%. The beta is analogous to the lambda, so weights of consecutive returns, or squared returns, the ratio of those weights of consecutive squared returns is beta. This additional term means that the GARCH 1-1 is mean reverting, and then we've gotten more sophisticated, so these two disadvantages in the exponentially weighted moving average have advantages in the GARCH 1-1 because we added this mean reversion. This GARCH 1-1 turns out to be easier to fit. There are algorithms that specifically allow us to parameterize the uh, alpha, beta, gamma weights based on a historical series. We can do that objectively as opposed to the exponential weight of moving average. That's a pretty big advantage. And then also, it does forecast because the forecast is going to be a variance series, an estimate of variance going forward that tends toward or converges toward the long run variance that's embedded in this omega term. So that's a recap of moving average versus exponentially weighted moving average versus GARCH 1-1. Thank you. If you like this video, if it was helpful, please subscribe to our channel.